Hey guys, and welcome back to Let's Play Skies of Arcadia Legends. Alright, so we are in the lands of Ixataka. Now, I think it's this ship uh, floating around here. Yeah, this is a black market ship parts dealer. Shh, hey kid, I got some balloon arms here. I also buy and sell discovery information. I've got everything you need. Yeah, of course. So, uh, first off, let's go ahead and sell our discovery information that we picked up. Should be able to get quite a bit out of this. You can see it's, I don't know, there's not really too much. Some of these are worth quite a lot. Combo Rock, especially. So let's go ahead and uh, sell everything we got. Uh, most of these should be... <laughs> it's kind of funny, because you can sell the Ixataka Discovery, and it says, yes, I've heard rumors of its existence, even though this guy is flying around inside of it. But, well, I guess we'll let that pass. Uh, so let's just go ahead and sell all the rest of this. And you can see we made, uh, actually, a pretty penny there. We actually got quite a bit from battles throughout the place, too. Uh, we can buy info if we want, which we actually can't because we found it all. That's pretty cool. Uh, we can check the wanted list. We've got a couple more here. Gordo the Round. Let's see what it's got to say. An air pipe that only attacks ships carrying food cargo in the North Ocean area, so we couldn't get there right now anyway. It's taking a liking to the spice trade between Valua, uh, uncapitalized Valua, and Ixataka. Learning from his chefs, he uses fire to not only cook his meals, but his opponents as well. Hmm. And Ixanes Demons. Target only ships that have handsome men as crew members. Uh oh, better watch out, Vice. Knowing that, some men who have been left behind in raids have been psychologically traumatized. They're fierce in battle as each covers the weaknesses of the others. Be careful. Yep. Alright, so a couple more wanted battles we can take part in. Now let's go ahead and uh, view some ship parts. So I'm going to sell some things real quick. I mean, get rid of this Valua Rang. We can get rid of this Hook Hand. I have, I've been kind of neglecting to, you know, sell old equipment and stuff. So we'll go ahead and take care of that real quick. Um, get rid of the Slayer Ring. We'll probably get rid of the Black Map. I don't really have much use for it. It sells for quite a bit, so. And some ship parts, we can get rid of this. And get rid of both of these armored decks. Keep the rest. Alright, so now let's buy. And as you can see, they've pretty much got upgrades for just about everything. Um, these G-type cannons, we're actually going to get three of to completely replace every cannon we've got, except for the uh, secondary one, of course. And the 5-inch cannon is going to replace our 3-inch blaster that I don't think we ever got the chance to use. And the shock torpedo. I am actually going to buy a torpedo. I do like to have at least one torpedo, usually just one. This is generally the type of setup I like to have. Two cannons, one secondary cannon, and a torpedo. That's about how I roll most of the time. And we've got um, a prime figure here. Which, uh, I wonder if that's supposed to be, because it does say crafted after a mystical red burrow. I wonder if that's supposed to be like Pyron type thing, but... Floor heater. Yeah. Takes advantage of engine heat to keep living quarters nice and comfortable. Mostly just a luxury thing. Doesn't do a lot. They also sell deluxe kits here, which we're going to get. Let's go ahead and buy one of these just to upgrade the road figure um, that we have. And we'll actually... We're pretty much going to stock up on deluxe kits. Um, I'm going to splurge a bit here and just get 50. That'll do us for a while. So, you know, they're good to have. So let's just exit and get out of here. You've heard of Domingo, right? He's one of the greatest explorers of our time. If you're hunting for treasure in this area, good luck. It's not easy finding anything that Domingo hasn't already discovered. Heh, <laughs> well, little does he know, I just pretty much cleaned the area out of Discovery, so there you go. Alright, so now as we go over here, it's kind of a crashed ship. We can't do anything with that um, from here. So we need to go around. You can see there's some huts here, and this is Horteca, which is going to be our uh, village here in Exitaka. So let's go in. And now this place, as you'll soon see, has one of the best tracks in the game. And uh, when it comes to this game, that's saying quite a lot, so. Um, there are a bunch of people wearing masks, and they have spears, too. Are you Kwetya? Huh? The girl in the white clothes. Is she Kwetya? What? Are they talking about me? Um, we're blue rogues. We came across the South Ocean. You are not Kwetya. You are the same as the other men from the East. It is best if you leave soon. No, not a very friendly welcome. What did I say? What do they mean, Kwetya, and who are the men from the East? I have no idea. I don't know what they're talking about. 
We should meet with the leader of the village. He might be able to explain what's going on here. Also, that trip across South Ocean has depleted our fuel supply. We need to stock up on Moonstones if we ever want to leave this place. Okay, let's find the leader of this village. Maybe we'll be able to find some Moonstones here as well. Wow, if we couldn't find Moonstones here, we'd be pretty much out of luck. Kind of stranded here, you know? It wouldn't be the first time we've been stranded somewhere, but... Yep, so this is Horteka. You've been able to hear actually most of the track throughout the dialogue there. So, good music, huh? I mean, it's really hard to argue that this is probably one of the better tracks in the game. Um, anyway, we got some exploring to do. Of course, New Village, you can see there's a lot of ladders and poles around everywhere, so... And we're going to be, be spending quite a lot of time looking around the place for treasure and moonfish, of course. Oh, I love this part of the music, too. I actually like it when it sort of kicks in with the harmony. I might shut up a bit for that, just because that's my favorite part. And it's actually about right here. And we got some climbing to do, so... No, wait, no, it's coming up after this. Pretty catchy, isn't it? Man, I love it. Uh, we got a little hut here. I don't actually think there's anything inside. I never really check in here, but... Mmm, that looks good. I guess Aiken was right about the fruit here. There seems to be plenty of it, that's for sure. We can't just go around and eat their food, man. They already don't want us here. Check the spears, maybe. Man, this is like a tiny house. Look at this. <laughs> oh, well. I guess it's kind of more of a storage area, I think. Anyway, we got a slide here. It's kind of hard to see, but there is one, so this should be fun. Man, now that's a way to get around. I'm telling you, this place is awesome. Good music, cool atmosphere, slides that just go everywhere. Man, this is really cool. Hey, what's up, buddy? Are you like the bartender here? I want some drinks, man. Get out. We don't have food for Easterners. Ugh. Hmm. Okay, then. What about you? You look a little different than everybody else. Nothing? Really? Okay. Alright, so now let's climb up to the second level. There is a reason we're doing all this. I know we've just kind of been messing around and not really getting anything, but there is actually something here to get. It's coming up very soon, actually. Now we want to run up this ramp here, and we can lift this thing up. You can see we'll go outside. And there's a monkey! That's not really what we came here for, though. There's also a chest with a Zachary box. Eh, not a lot, but maybe it's worth picking up. Alright, and then down we go, and up this ladder, I believe. Like I said, there's a lot of ladders and poles and everything around here, so... Looks like we got another slide up there. And, um, it may look like, uh, well, there is a ladder up here, but there's really nothing up there. I'm not gonna waste the time. Uh, I might kinda have some trouble finding a way out, but there's actually a door right here. Like, you can kinda see where the grass is. You can actually just walk out right there. It's kinda hidden, but... Now, I believe, yes, here there's also a moonfish we can catch kinda up in the, uh, trees there. So let's grab him. And alrighty then. So here's the slide. There it is. Oh. Hey, wasn't that an enemy we fought? The flying strawberry thing? So yes, yeah, so we slide back down, and this place should look familiar. This is actually the pole that we climbed up where I let you hear the music, so we pretty much just made a giant circle there, which is kind of neat. So, um, let's see. Now I think we need to uh, climb back up. Man, I love this part of the music. I can't get over it. Like, the, the whole beginning part of the game, like, you know, the, the intro, the Valua part. The Valua part's cool. Then we get into the Nasrad part, which I'm... Er, not Nasrad, but Nasser, rather. Which I'm not incredibly into. I mean, I've, I've seen it quite a lot, you know? So it's kind of like... Uh, it sort of drags on a little bit for me. But once we get here, and I hear this music, and I see this place, I get, like, completely reinvigorated for it. You know, it's awesome. Alright, so we got another pole here that we want to climb up, so let's do that. See another monkey hanging underneath there. I like just the little things they put here and there. Okay, got a spinner. Whoa. That was cool how the camera actually went inside that log thing there for a while. It was interesting. Hey, what's up, man? 
Nothing. Man, these people don't, don't even talk to me. Alright, so we can kind of make our way around here. There's this little platform we can ride on. Not as cool as the slides, but cool nonetheless. Open the chest at the other end for a moon bear. I'm not sure how many we have now. Um, probably not enough to learn any of Vice's stuff. Oh, we got four. Ooh. Ooh, this is really tempting. As you can see, though, it uses 21 SP. We wouldn't get to use it very often, but this move is so cool, and I really want it. Well, let's see. I don't know. Aka, I don't really use a lot of Aka's moves from here on out. Um, you can see here's the damage all enemies on screen, but again, Vice already has Reign of Swords. This uses less SP, but uh, I'm honestly not sure. I might end up picking that up just because it uses less SP and it makes it a little more wieldy to use early on. We'll have to see. All right, yeah, you know, let's actually go ahead and get this. Well, <laughs> I know Vice's big move is tempting and all, but it's kind of a waste to get at this point, really. Um, this one is actually interesting. It restores 10 MP. So that, that might be something worth picking up just to sort of abuse in battle once. Um, we can also learn Drachma's next move focuses him where doubling his spirit points and defending against attacks. Uh, it's basically like a super focus. You can see it uses 0 SP. Um, his next move is really good, so we might pick that up. Yeah, let's get that. Let's see spirit charge there. And uh, Aka's move, of course, was Lambda Burst. So there you go. Yeah, I mean, really, when it comes down to it, there's only kind of a handful of special moves that I ever actually get around to using, so... I don't know, it, it kind of makes it hard to determine which ones I want to learn, which is why I just kind of stockpile Moonberries for a while. <laughs> Alright, so back to the bottom of the pole we go, and now I believe we can climb down this ladder. And we're pretty much done with the first half of the village. Um, you'll see once we get down here, there's actually a tunnel we can go through, which will take us to the second half. So let's climb down. I like the water underneath, too. This place is just so cool, you know? See, the, like, the water underneath there, the little flowing stream? That's really awesome looking. Alright, whoop, no, don't need to go in there. Now, this is that tunnel I was talking about. The map kind of goes away here, and you're forced to find your way around these turns. And we move on to the second half. Um, now, this place right up here, as you can probably guess, is going to be the Elder's Tent, because it's a lot more decorated and everything. It looks kind of cool, actually. So, uh, let's head in and have some conversation time. So, you are the ones from the East who people have been talking about. So, you are from the East. Your people bring disaster. Leave this village immediately. Wait a minute, why does everyone keep talking about these men from the East and this Kwetya stuff? I don't even know what a Kwetya is. Vice is not very culturally sensitive, if you haven't noticed. Kwetya is our god. Generations ago, when the giant came to destroy us, Kwetya appeared and saved our village. Ancient prophecies say that Kwetya's messengers will come from the east and save us if our land is ever in danger. I understand, and since we came from the east, that's why everyone thinks Kwetya sent us. But if Kwetya's messengers are supposed to save you, why did you say the people from the east bring disaster? Even now, the men from the east are destroying our land. They claim they come from a place called Valua. Valua? They're here too? When the people from Valua came, everyone thought that Kwetya sent them. Even the king came to greet them. The people from Valua said they wanted moonstones. We took them to our sacred mountain where we keep glow rocks. So, the Valuans came to steal their moonstones. And then the people from Valua attacked us with fire-breathing iron ships. They took control of sacred mountain. Everyone, even the king, fought. But many were killed and the forest was burned. The survivors were taken as slaves. That's terrible. They're using your people to gather the moonstones so they can make weapons. So that's why everyone's so against the men from the east. Please, you need to trust us. We're different from the Valuans, the men from the East. We fight against Valua so they can't hurt people. And that is why we've come all this way. We need a very precious stone called a Moon Crystal. Hmm. You can't expect them to trust us. You're wasting your time, boy. Please, I'm telling the truth. Please. If you fly north from this village, you'll see a small hut in the middle of the forest. That is where our king is hiding. The kings of our land have always passed down the sacred green stone from generation to generation. This may be the stone that you seek. Your eyes, they are pure. I believe that you are here to help us. Please, save our people. Uh huh. Thank you. I will not betray you. 
Let's go. We've got a village to save. Hmm. Well, there you go, Drachma, trying to be all <laughs> pessimistic. Oh, you can't expect him to trust us. Ha, well, shows you, I guess. Sometimes if you ask nicely, that's all you gotta do. Alright, so, uh, what's she doing here? So, you're from the east? You look tired. Would you like a room for the night? It'll be 160 gold. That's actually the same price they charge in uh, Maramba, believe it or not. <laughs> you seem refreshed. Come again, anytime you need a rest. Alright, so there we go. We've spoken with the Elder, and it seems as though he has um, agreed to help us. I guess Vice just has that charm that he can put on people, you know, but... Um, Alright, so we've got a couple more things to sort of check out around Hortega Village. There's also, of course, the um, situation that we're out of fuel and we need to pick up some moonstones in order to even leave this place. So we'll still have to find those as well. Uh, but I think I'm actually going to leave off right here for the time being. So, until next time, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you then.